Hello everyone and welcome to our lesson on 9.1b. Yesterday we simplified radicals and so now we're going to look at different operations with radicals. So those operations will be we're going to add and subtract them together and then we're going to multiply and divide because when we're working with triangles we're going to have to use some of these skills to simplify our radical expressions. And so the first thing we want to start with is adding and subtracting radicals. So it says, just like we combine like terms to simplify expressions, we combine like radicals to simplify radical expressions. So we just give you a quick example, 5 root 2 minus 2 root 2. What this is saying is I have 5 root 2's hanging out all together in a group. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's 5 of them. And how many do I want to subtract or take away? I want to take away, it says, I want to take away 2. So I'm going to cross two of them out total. So how many are going to remain? Five minus two, I'm going to have a total of three root twos left there, three root twos. So you can essentially, as long as the radicals match, you can replace this with an X if you need to. This is the same thing as like saying five X minus two X equals three X, okay? Uh, just a few things to note though, um, make sure both parts are simplified before adding or subtracting. So we wanna make sure they're totally simplified. That's why we did yesterday's lesson before today's. And then if the radical is simplified and the numbers underneath the radical do not match, so what happens when they don't match? Then you cannot add or subtract them. So just like we cannot add three X plus four Y, an example would be you can't add root three plus root two. Okay, that's actually one of our examples. Let me give you a different one. <laughs> root three plus root seven okay those are both fully simplified and they do not match and so we cannot put them together root three plus root seven would just remain root three plus root seven it's fully simplified okay so here's some practice with that um, on our first few problems what do i have on number one i have three root sixes and i want to take away five of them so i'm just going to do the numbers that's going to be three minus five root six that's what you're doing that three minus that five is going to give us negative two. So I'm just putting those coefficients together. That is negative two root six. So that's like replacing it with an X. You'd say three X minus five X equals negative two X. Okay. All right, let's do that again on number five. I know I'm kind of going left to right instead of up and down, um, but I just feel like it flows a little bit more naturally that way. And so I have two root threes and I wanna take away eight root threes, okay? So how many root threes am I gonna have remaining is the question. Well, two minus eight is going to give me negative six. So my final answer would be that I have negative six root threes. Okay, and then you get to number two, and number two is interesting because I'm gonna color code this like before. I have a certain amount, I have a root three sitting right here, and I'm trying to add to it a root two. Those are not like radicals, those are not the same. And root two is already fully simplified and root three is already fully simplified, meaning it has no perfect square factors. So this is actually already fully simplified. I cannot put them together because those are unlike radicals that are totally simplified. On number six, I have a root three and I'm adding another root three to it. So how many do I have total? There's two of them there. There's one here and there's one here. So I'm gonna add together my coefficients one root three plus one root three gives me two root threes remaining. Two root threes in total. And then this is where it starts to get tricky, so I'm gonna slow down a little bit. We have our, uh, we have our root six. As far as my perfect squares go, if you wanna write out your perfect squares, we know that the, um, I'm gonna write this small, square root of one is one, square root of four is two, square root of nine is three, Square root of 16 is four. So I'm not gonna go all the way up, but I'm gonna put the ones that we're gonna need. This list is just nice to have when you're looking for perfect square factors. Um, let's see, seven squared is 49. Eight squared is 61. Nine squared, 64, sorry guys. Nine squared, I just mixed those two together. Nine squared is 81. That's 81 for nine. I'm just gonna go up to 10, which is square root of 100. Okay, so there's our perfect squares. If I'm looking for my perfect square factors, there they are. Um, if I try to simplify root six, it is already fully reduced, okay? So two root six is going to remain two root six. But this root 54 is not fully simplified. So where does that fall in my list? Let me change colors. Where does that fall in my list, this root 
54. It falls between these two perfect squares. So I'm gonna go up my list and see what is the biggest perfect square factor that goes into that if there is one. So here's what you're typing in on your calculator. Um, most of these you'll be able to do in your head, but you're gonna type in is 54 divided by 49. Does that give you a whole number? Obviously it does not, so you're gonna keep going. 54 divided by 36, that's 1.5, not a whole number. 54 divided by 25 is obviously not gonna work. And then 54 divided by 16 does not work. 54, and when I say does not work, I mean it does not, it's not a factor, it does not give you a whole number. So then we do 54 divided by nine, and that does, that gives me six. So I get to rewrite this as the three still hanging out up front, but I'm gonna rewrite this instead of root 54 as root nine, root six. And I like to list that perfect square first, okay? Why does this help me out? Because now I can rewrite this as two root six plus three, times, I can take that square root, three root six, okay? So now the root sixes do match, root six and root six. I just need to simplify the coefficients. So I'm gonna go up here. So that would be two root six plus three times three is nine root six. So if I have two root six and I wanna add nine root sixes to it, that's gonna be two plus nine makes 11 total root sixes. 11 total root sixes. So while they didn't look like they were like radicals at the beginning, we had to simplify it to see if both of those would reduce to root six. If not, we just would have left it broken apart. Okay, apparently I really like number four because I did it twice. So we're just gonna um, cross out number seven and we'll do it on number four. Negative four root two, root two is fully simplified. Currently does not match the root 50. So let's simplify root 50 and see, are there any perfect square factors, which there are. That's root 25, root two. Why does that help me out? Because now I have negative four root two plus five root two. This is a perfect square, so I can take that perfect square. And now I have the negative four root two and the positive five root two, so I can combine those. That becomes positive one root two. You, another way to write that is just as root two. You don't have to write the understood one. All right, this last problem, root eight plus root 10, they currently appear to not match. So let's simplify them both. Root 10 is already fully simplified, so we're gonna leave that how it is. Uh, I would check my list. Nine is not a factor of 10. Um, let's see, nine and then four and then one. So that's not gonna help me to take that out. So, but I can rewrite root eight as root four, root two. The square root of four is, that's a perfect square, so that's gonna give me two root two plus root 10. Because one of these is still a root two, but the other one is a root 10. I cannot put those together. Those are not like radicals. So I'm gonna leave that broken apart and that is the answer fully simplified. All right, so now we have multiplying and dividing radicals. This is a little bit different. The number or expression outside of the radical is called its coefficient and the expression on the inside of the radical is going to be called the radicand. When we multiply or divide, we're gonna simplify the coefficients with coefficients and we're gonna multiply or divide radicands with radicands. So another way to say this is the numbers on the outside of the radical symbol get multiplied and divided with the numbers on the outside. The numbers on the inside get, number, get multiplied or divided with the numbers on the inside. So in, in class, we talked about how like you have your outdoorsy people that like to hang out and do things together, and then you have your indoorsy people. I'm an indoorsy person. So I'm going to wanna hang out with people that wanna hang out inside, okay? And so that's like a fancy way to say that, coefficients with coefficients and radicands with radicands. So for this example, if we were to color code it, my radicands, the ones sitting under the radical symbol, are five and seven. My outdoorsy people are the two root five and the three root seven. So when you multiply, you're doing two times three is six, and then root five times root seven is root 35. That is fully simplified. So there's no perfect square factors of 35, so that is my final answer. So let's do some problems that look like that and then we will come back. It says you can wait to simplify radicals until after you have multiplied or divided. That way you're only having to do it once. And so what do I have here? Coefficients or radicands. I have radicands, those are both under a radical. So I get to multiply them together. So that's gonna be five times two under the same radicand. This becomes root 10. My final answer is root 10. Okay, and number two, I have radicands, root three and root three. They don't have to match, but these just happen to match. And then I have two and four are my coefficients. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do pink times pink, and I'm gonna do yellow times yellow. 
And so let me color code that. That's going to be 2 times 4 is equal to 3 times 3, where both of those are under the radical symbol. So this becomes 2 times 4 is 8. Root 3 times root 3 is root 9. So we're putting together our yellow pieces, and we're putting together our pink pieces using multiplication. Now, all you have to do at the very end is make sure that this is fully simplified, and we know that 8 root 9 is going to simplify. That's a perfect square, so it's 8 times 3. I can take the square root of 9, it's 3. So what is 8 times 3? That is 24. Way more simple than what we started with. And the last problem like that, again, I have two coefficients, 2 and 3, and then my radicands are root 5 and root 20. And so that would be 2 times 3 root 5, root 20. I'm just reordering them so that the ones that I'm going to multiply are next to each other. So there's my radicands. There are my, so my inside people. And then here are my outside uh, people. So 2 times 3 is 6, root 100. 6 root 100. That would be my final answer if the square root of 100 would not simplify. Oh, goodness. If it would not simplify, but we know that it does. Where, what is the square root of 100? It's a perfect square. So 6 root 100 is going to be 6 times 10, which is, because we can take the square root of 100, which is 60. 60. That was a horrible six. Hold on, guys. I feel better about that one. Okay. So adding and subtracting, we'll look at more problems like that of, of practice, but now I want to talk through dividing. Uh, for number two, it says you cannot leave a radical in the denominator if it's going to be fully simplified. So to rationalize the denominator, you must multiply the numerator and the denominator by the radical that is in the denominator. So I'm going to explain this in a math way, and then I'm going to give you like kind of like an example. So who do I have an issue with in this problem? We have an issue. This is not fully simplified because this root 5 is in the denominator. So that means it's not fully simplified. So mathematically, how could I turn that into a perfect square so that the radical symbol will no longer remain in the denominator? Well, I can take that original problem, and I can say, okay, right now it's root 5. But if I were to multiply that denominator by root 5, when I do root 5 times root 5, that's going to turn this into root 25. Why do I like that? Because the square root of 25 is just whole number 5. And now, boom, there's no more radical in the denominator. However, if we're going to do that to the denominator, we have to also do that to the numerator. So notice, they didn't just multiply the denominator by root 5, because that would change this fraction. To keep this algebraically the same, they also had to multiply the numerator times root 5. So what you're doing here, just so you know, this is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over 1. You can multiply anything by itself, and it's by 1, and it's still going to be itself, okay? They've just done it in a way that that makes that into a perfect square, okay? So if you do that, though, let's look at what happens here. This is 3 root 5. That is the coefficient. That is the radicand, so that remains separate. The one outside stays outside. The one inside stays inside. And so this becomes 3 root 5 over 5. We just need to check that those two yellow numbers are fully simplified, which they are. 3 root 5 over 5. We are okay with a radical in the numerator, but it is not fully simplified if there's a radical in the denominator. So the way I kind of think about this, um, I gave this uh, to a student the other day that was struggling with it. I talked about it like, um, like my parents had an expectation that um, once I was out of college that I moved out of the house. And, um, they no longer they they invited me to no longer live with them, and so like this is the original problem, right? We're okay. I'm okay hanging out in my parents' house, but they don't want me staying there forever, right? And so I look at this like that you have an upstairs and a main level of your house, and then you have the basement. My parents are not okay with me living in their basement forever, and so we need to get. Eventually, the goal is through education and through jobs is to get me out of the basement. So if you see a radical in the in the denominator, I think of that like a. Um, parent having an adult living with them at home, which for my parents, they wanted me to eventually move out. And so when I'm looking at this and I say, okay, well, what is the issue on this problem? Um, the issue is, is that there's a radical in the denominator. Okay. It's in the, what we call the basement in class. And so we talked about how do we help this person get out of the denominator? We, um, we multiply by root two. So we kind of compared that in class. One of my teachers had a, um, he had a good analogy. He said, it's kind of like you meet your perfect match. Um, and so root 2 times root 2 is going to give me root 4. Well, why are we okay with that? Because the square root of 4 is going to simplify to whole number 2. So now we no longer have radicals in the denominator. Okay. But if we did that um, to the denominator of my fraction, I also have to do that in the numerator. I have to multiply by root 2. So then this becomes 3 
root two over root four. Again, three root two over root four. And then all I have to do is check that that three over two is fully simplified, which it is on this problem. Okay, so that just moved it upstairs. We like laughed and joked that my parents are okay with me coming over to their kitchen on the main level and visiting, but they want me to leave and go home after that. Okay, so it's okay if it's in the numerator. We do not want to leave a radical in the denominator if it's not fully simplified. Okay, so let's do our other problems like that. Okay, who is my issue here? The root two is my issue. So we're okay with the three. That is just a coefficient. We're okay with having a coefficient in the denominator. We have two over three. I compared that, it's kind of like my, um, my younger brother. He's allowed to stay at home. Whenever he was in middle school, they were fine with him being in their basement, but they wanted me to eventually get a job and move out. Um, so that they could be empty nesters. And so the three is not my issue, that's a coefficient. I'm not okay with the radicand. So what do I need to do? It needs to meet its perfect match to make it root four. So this becomes three in the denominator, three root four, three root four. Why do they like that? Because the square root of four simplifies to two. So this is three times two, three times two, that becomes a whole number. Three times two is six. Okay, so that's, that's way more simple. But if we did that in the denominator, we also have to do that in the numerator. Kind of think about it like my spouse meeting my parents. I want it to meet the, um, the main level two. So that will become two root two, coefficient radicand. And that becomes again, two root two. We're gonna simplify at the very end. Two root two over six. And so then two root two over six. This one does simplify. I need to simplify those yellow numbers, those two coefficients. Two divided by six simplifies to one over three. So this becomes one root three, one root two over three. Another way to write this is just as root two over three. You don't have to write that understood one there. So this one would be acceptable or this one. All right, number seven seems scary because you see a root five. I'm okay with the root five in the numerator, but not in the denominator. Always check and see if it, there's a radical that it matches exactly that you can cancel it out with. Boom, root five over root five is just one, and three times one is just three. Three is all that remains. All right, that does not happen here. There's not a root 10 living in the numerator as well, so I have to multiply times its perfect match. That gives me root 100 which fixes the problem because now I just have a coefficient of 10. I have a, a constant of 10 in the denominator, okay? But I have to multiply that by that in the top as well. So this becomes 20 root 10. So 20 root 10 over 10. Again, simplify the 20 over the 10. 20 over 10 is just two. So this is just two root 10. You could put it over one or you don't have to. Okay, so this is called rationalizing the denominator. Okay, so who is the problem on this one? The root three living right here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply it by its perfect match to turn it into a perfect square. We're gonna multiply in the numerator and in the denominator by root three. I'm gonna do the denominator at once. That becomes six root nine, which simplifies to six times three, which simplifies to 18. This is a, this is a hard problem. I call this the X games mode problem. What, is, what happens up here? This is 18 and then that's root, this is interesting, this is root five times root three. That's going to become root 15. I can multiply those out. So this becomes 18 root 15, 18 root 15 over 18. The two 18s simplify to just one over one, and so this is just one root 15, or plain old just root 15. So your assignment is on the back. You've got some uh, problems to practice. This is, these are just some uh, radical operations that will come up in some of the triangles that we're working with this unit in geometry. So I hope you have a wonderful day.